abnormal and emergency procedures Airbus A320 engine failure after V1 You may find the procedures core in the flight crew techniques manual FCTM chapter procedures subchapter abnormal and emergency procedures part engines engine failure after V1 for more detailed information about the specific reason for the engine failure and how to deal, refer to the Flight Crew Operational Manual, FCOM, Section Aircraft Systems, Chapter Engines, Section Procedures, Chapter Abnormal and Emergency Procedures, Part Engines. Pilots may recognize an engine flameout or failure by uncommanded yaw a rapid decrease of EGT, N2 and fuel flow followed by a decrease in N1. Engine damage may be accompanied by an explosion, vibrations, repeated stalls and indications such as hydraulic fluid loss or no N1 and N2 rotation. If an engine fails after V1, the flight crew must continue the takeoff. The essential and primary tasks are associated with aircraft handling. Follow the basic rules fly, navigate, communicate. If an engine fails between V1 and VR, maintain directional control by smoothly applying the rudder. Note. As soon as possible, apply the rudder trim. The trim speed is 1 degree per second and to fully trim the not working engine takes approximately 15 degrees to 18 degrees, the same value in seconds. Be ready at liftoff to apply a bit more rudder as the main landing gear lose contact with ground and friction, which helps to keep direction. Although the aircraft is certified to climb safely on one engine at flex power, toga power is available and may be used. At VR, rotate by a bit less than the standard speed rate towards 12.5 degrees or approximately 10 degrees if thrust remains at FLX. Hold at that pitch for a while and follow the FD pitch bar. Do not rotate early or rapidly. Do not over-rotate. You would probably face aircraft energy lose and pitch oscillations trying to gain speed back. Try to avoid the tendency to under-rotate, which would induce a nose-down and danger of sink rate. Confirm positive climb on the vertical speed indicator and the radio altimeter and apply landing gear up. At this moment, and if you reach the correct rudder trim, the beta target is centralized, engage the autopilot. After the autopilot is positively engaged, it could be the right moment to apply toga thrust. When safely airborne, the autopilot will then follow the SRS orders that may request a lower pitch attitude in order to obtain the target speed. Note. Takeoff thrust is limited to 10 minutes. Follow runway heading, standard instrument departure, SID, or engine out standard instrument departure, EOS ID, as it was briefed before flight during emergency part of departure briefing. Pilot flying, PF, will select heading mode on the flight control unit, FCU, or pilot monitoring, PM, will activate engine out standard instrument departure, EOS ID, from the secondary flight plan if available in Flight Management Guidance Computer, FMGC. So far, the basic rules part fly and navigate have been done, and it is possible to focus on the failure itself. Pilots need to ensure themselves they see the same failure, and they need to take immediate action following the Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring System, ECAM. The air traffic controller, ATC, may be informed in the acceleration segment, where the time pressure is lower. As the recommended altitude of 400 feet above ground level, AGL, is reached, 
PF should order ECAM action. It exactly means he has control, navigation and communications. PM starts to read and perform all actions required by ECAM with the primary goal to get the engine secured at or above acceleration altitude. Secure the engine means that the flight crew should continue the ECAM procedure until engine master off, in the case of an engine failure without damage, or agent 1 discharged, in the case of an engine failure with damage, or fire is extinguished or agent 2 discharged in case of an engine fire in flight the pf and pm must cross check before any action on the following controls engine master lever inertial reference mode selector all guarded controls cockpit circuit breakers the flight crew must cross-check the above listed controls in order to prevent any inadvertent action by the flight crew with irreversible effects. It is the PF responsibility to operate the thrust levers. Therefore, the PM should not operate the thrust levers. If any ECAM, QRH or OEB procedure requests, the PM should ask the PF to operate the corresponding lever. When the engine is secured, and the engine out acceleration altitude, EO, is reached, the PF order stop ECAM action pull the vertical speed knob on the FCU and monitor the aircraft acceleration. As the acceleration takes some time, it could be the right moment to inform ATC about the problem and the flight path briefly. So far, the crew had not been able to consider all available information and did not decide whether to land back in origin or continue to take off alternate. It may be helpful to ask ATC to wait for comprehensive details. Suppose we perform the takeoff at flaps configuration other than 1 plus F. Then as the speed rise above F speed PF order flaps 1 and when the speed grows above S speed the PF order flaps 0. Note. If the flight crew flies the aircraft manually, the PF should remember that, as airspeed increases, the rudder input necessary to center the beta target decreases. When the flap lever is at zero, the beta target reverts to the usual sideslip indication. If the crew decides to delay the acceleration, the flight crew must not exceed the engine's maximum acceleration altitude. Final takeoff segment. When the speed trend arrow reaches the green dot speed, pull the altitude knob to engage open climb, OPCLB. Set the thrust levers to maximum continues thrust, MCT. When the lever maximum continues thrust, LVRMCT, message flashes on the FMA. The message appears when the speed index reaches the green dot. Resume the climb phase with thrust MCT. If the thrust levers are already in the flex maximum continues thrust, FLX MCT, detent. Move the thrust levers to climb detent, CL, and then back to MCT. Note. The noise abatement procedures are no longer a requirement. Flying flap zero and at green dot speed provides the best climb gradient. At this phase of flight may be helpful to ask ATC for vectoring for a hold to finish the abnormal procedure. When the aircraft is established on the final takeoff flight path, the flight crew should continue the electronic centralized aircraft monitoring system, ECAM, procedure. The pilot flying PF, order continue ECAM and the pilot monitoring PM, follow the ECAM requirements. After all immediate actions are completed, the secondary faults are diagnosed via system display pages SD. Both pilots will check the actual situation on each SD page.
After all secondary fault pages are cleared, the status page appears, the PF order stop ECAM action. In all cases, the flight crew must stop the ECAM actions before reading the status page. Previous, after takeoff climb checklist, has been replaced by Airbus recently. The acceleration flow pattern should be checked or done now, and both the computer reset and engine relight, if no damage, considered. The purpose of the status page is to overview the aircraft's technical status in all flight phases. Therefore, the flight crew must check the whole status page information to assess the situation and make the appropriate decision correctly. When status page has been read and removed, the PM announces ECAM action completed. The usual PF and PM roles are applied from this stage of flight. The flight crew has to collect and confirm the following information. Technical Single engine operation does not have excessive influence on the approach and land. All critical systems are well backed up, and all systems work correctly. A different situation may happen if the aircraft had already been operated with some MEL or a combination of faults appears. To refer QRH, FCOM and MEL may be necessary. Operational Current weather at origin, the takeoff alternate and available fuel may be critical for decision making. Landing performance calculation is necessary at this moment. Commercial Suppose the options are from the technical and operational point of view similar. In that case, it could be worth asking Company Operation Control, OCC, which choices could be better for passengers and the company itself. After the FC gather and sort all available sources, it is time to evaluate the overall situation and options. Both pilots must stay well organized even in such a stressful situation. It is recommended to use some acronyms, which helps not forget any vital part of the decision-making process. One of the often used acronyms is DODAR. The first letters mean D diagnose, O options, D decisions, A actions, R rewu. When the decision has been made and agreed upon by both flight crew members, it is the right time to inform air traffic controllers, ATC, in detail. The intention, requirements and possible emergency should be declared. Then the cabin crew, CC, is informed to get time to adjust the cabin, passengers and themselves for the situation. Some other acronym may help with the briefing for CC. NITSA, the first letter means N, the nature of the problem I, flight crew intention T. Time to land. S. Special procedures applied and required. A. Announcement. Who and when will be done. After ATC and CC are informed about FC intention and at the right time, the PF ask PM overtaking aircraft control by the phrase, you have control and communication. Then he starts with approach and landing preparation utilize all information already gathered and base on the flight crew joint decision. The preparation is checked by PM and finished by approach briefing done by PF. We hope you always enjoy the procedure at the simulator lesson.